Okay guys, I'm down in the hole here. Dwayne's digging it out. We started here. Got our footer exposed. There's the old drain. She's clogged up. You can see, I don't know if you can see it guys, but it's full of dirt and mud. So that drain's not gonna work. Uh, so that's not good. So we're digging it out. I like to put a little X for him. We got a laser set up up there. And I got my story stick set here to the where I want the bottom of the stone. And then I got a 10 inch concrete footer going on top of that. So we set this laser up according to those dimensions. And I'll just go along here and spot check him. He does have a laser on the side of his excavator there that he, a magnetic laser, which is right there. That little thing right there. That's actually a magnetic laser that he stuck on there. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. That thing will actually beep where he gets to the height he wants. So that's pretty nice too. Getting her dug out. It's 30 by 26 down in here is our dimension. That's what we're doing. Close up. Be able to hear that laser when he gets to where he wants to be here. He's a little bit, gotta go down a little bit. To hear that laser beep. hit his depth and started to beep. He could see that from inside the cab, that laser. I didn't know he had that, uh, one of those. That's pretty cool. When he gets his height, you'll hear a beep. that steady tone right there that's the height he wants to be at here's where we're at guys got this all dug out Blaine's working his way to that corner we're all the way into here yeah we hit a wire which we knew we were gonna we knew there was a wire in here the homeowner told us and uh, he's a lineman so um, electrician he's gonna he had all the parts here to fix it because he knew we were going to hit it. We just barely hit it. If the thing was a foot shorter, we wouldn't have hit it. But we ended up hitting it and he spliced it back together right there. Do some splices. Hooked it all back together. So he's got power back. So it wasn't bad. It took him about an hour to fix it. He's going to put a new service in when we're done anyways. But that's where we're at right now. pretty good okay guys we got the hole all dug i just ran over with my trailer and grabbed Dwayne's um skidster he's got a tracked kubota skidster it's an svl 90 real nice machine so we dug a ramp to come down in here and we're gonna put stone in the bottom of this we've got a lot of clay and stuff in here so we're gonna get some stone in here we're not working in the mud and we gotta build it up anyway, so that's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna jump down in that hole, give him a hand, set our laser up to our new height that we want. I gotta come along, I'll help him spread it out. Well, I'm not sure what we're gonna do with the skidster, won't make it up the hill. Probably gonna have to pull him out with the excavator. Maybe he can go backwards out of there and push his way out with a front bucket. Oop, what are the other way doing? Uh, that's gonna be interesting. Yeah, he's gonna have to bucket his way up. That's not gonna work so good. Kind of greasy in this play. We thought we could uh, use a skidster to get in there. better luck some a little traction in that clay that should work a little better
do it. Hmm. So we dug the ramp down a little bit. It's a lot easier to get in and out of here now. That ramp was just a little too steep. So he's coming right up and down it now. Getting our stone in. This is just number two stone, guys. No gravel in it. It's just number two stone. We're just putting it as a base underneath here. It drains well, too. Keeps the floor dry and stuff. So Dwayne's got a pile of it up there. Just coming right down with it. That's a heck of a machine, that Kubota SVL90 is a beast. Especially when it's wet. Kubota powerhouse. Here we are, guys. Got everything done today. Everything's dug. We got our stone in there. Ready to start our footer tomorrow. Didn't take too long. It's like 2 o'clock. We got Dwayne's all loaded up. Got the skidster on my truck. Got a pile of stone left. Once we put the footers in, we'll bring another some more stone in the middle here. That's how we did it. Hey guys, Bondo here. We're putting in the exit perimeter drain right here. This is a solid pipe that connects to the perforated pipe that goes around the outside and it runs to daylight. We had our laser set up here so that we could make sure this pipe pitches. So it has a pitch going all the way from where it exits the um, building all the way out into the woods there where we exited the line. It'll have, it'll have a pitch in it, so it'll just constantly pull water away from the building. I'm just backfilling it in here. We already have it in. Like I said, that's just solid pipe, guys. The perforated line goes around the outside of it, and uh, this just pulls the water away. It's just gravity-fed. That's how it works. And we like to get these in before we do much work, because then if it rains inside the um, building while it's open... You're not going to have a wet building. It's just going to drain the water out as you're working. We had to work around this propane line. 
Okay guys, here's what we got done today. This is day two. Got our footers built. All ready for concrete. We put our drain in. We got our exit drain going out there into the woods. That's a tune in, Frank. We hit uh, the power line again, unfortunately, because it's really weird where it went. So not sure why we did that, but they're gonna put a new one in anyways, but just a headache. Go give him a hand with the truck, will you? And that's what we got going on today. Maybe we can get concrete for tomorrow. Okay guys, so this is where we hit the, the power line the other day. It was here and it was connected right to there. So they spliced it. So we stayed under it to dig our perimeter, our perimeter drain to go out to daylight. And we hit it way back here. So, I mean, it comes out here, we hand dug it. After we hit it, it goes into there. So you'd think it would run along here and into the back of the house right there where the electric goes in. But no, there's a big loop or something. And when you look at this, there's four lines. Maybe one's a cable line or something, but there's four lines here and there's only three there. But we did hit the power, so gotta splice it again, unfortunately. Like I said, they're gonna put another line in, but another pain in the butt today, but we'll get her. Okay guys, here's the footer we're gonna pour. This is our third job today. We poured the um, stamped concrete and then the little garage floor patch. And now we're going to do this footer. This is 30 by 26. 26 wide, 30 this way. The footer's 10 inches thick. It's got uh, two rebar in it. And it's 20 inches wide. And we got a bunch of rebar we're going to stick in for our uh, vertical rebars every two feet after we pour it. So concrete should be here any minute. Here comes the mud. Circle T Ready Mix Division. There's the info right there. Big Biscuit style. That big Biscuit. Get them in there, Buck. Straighten them out. Huh? We got the conveyor today. Mm -hmm. Got a mad dog in the window, I'll tell you what. Bad neighbor, bad that dog's mad. He's mad. What's up? I haven't seen you in a while, huh? Shit, we could have had our first beer by now, bud. Let's get her done. So here's how we poured the footer, guys. We use a conveyor truck, as you've seen here. That conveyor will reach out 38 feet, so we're able to back it right in there to the middle and hit this whole thing. Um, we had some concrete left over after we poured the footer, so we just poured it in the middle because there's going to be a jack post in the middle of this. So we just put a big blob of concrete in there, and I, I checked it with my laser at the end, and uh, I screeded it off so it was level with the footer, and that's just where the jack post is going to sit, and the floor is going to be poured over top of that. If you guys aren't a subscriber, check out my channel if you like this kind of stuff. We do a lot of these new dural walls and stuff. I got a lot of tips and tricks I could show you. There's a lot of other videos that I've done that would help you out too. So check it out. Thanks. Here I got Carl the Kubota guys, and he's going to put the stone down in the bottom there. Um, big biscuit and tuna are down in there with the um, the bob kitten, and they're going to spread the stone around with that. That's how we did it. I just had the stone dropped off here, and we used that ramp that uh, Dwayne had dug for getting the other stone in there down deep, and we just drove the Kubota right in there. And now uh, you can see in a minute here, the boys will... Use the bob kitten, now they're waving to you, and spread it around with that. It worked pretty good. We got all the stones spread around pretty quick that day.
Leave me a comment, guys, how you get stone down into the basement. Do you use a stone slinger? Or do you use, like, a bobcat or a tractor? How do you do that? Um, we've done it all different ways. We've done it with a big towel belt before. Um, when the customer wanted to get it done really fast, we've used that towel belt on that big machine that we used to rent from Vitaly Concrete. We got some lines snapped on our footer. We checked our diagonals for square. And we're just setting the Nadura blocks right onto the string line. Um, two of the boats clipping the corners together, or clipping the whole row together. I uh, said it before, but on this first row, we always clip the entire course, top and bottom here. And he up in here, the clip's upside down. So we clip that every seam on this first course, guys, that holds it together. And uh, there is no common seam on this project because it's 26 wide. So we actually had a cut. We ended up cutting this much off of one block. So if you look at that, we're four inches from this here, right on a line we cut it. So we cut it right on a line. So that means, and that cut was right here. Let me line it up a little better for you. So, that right there you can see our nubs are in the right orientation so we can go right over top of that with our next course and we will not have a common seam there because you're able to clip it too and this is where that cut is so if these weren't spaced eight inches apart you wouldn't be able to clip it you wouldn't be able to lock the next course over it so you would have to put a common seam plate there but since how it's 26 that comes out to even even measurements from the dura so like I said, Tuna's just clipping everything together. Once we get it all clipped together, before we, we're gonna spray foam it to the footer. But before we do that, we're going to double check our um, diagonal measurement. We're gonna check it right there to the corner here. Boom, measure that. And then we're gonna measure the other corner. And those two dimensions should be the same. If they're the same, then this box is square take you back to high school math right there all right biscuit is it hot today it's beautiful out beautiful balmy 95 degrees in the sun here stay hydrated good tip of the day what we did here too guys is we left we left some rebars out right here the other day when we wet set our rebars we left them out so that we could drive our tractor right down in here as you've seen in the earlier part of the video we were driving right down in here with the stone so that saves us money that's what we do then we just drill them out we got my hammer drill here we just drill them back out and stuck them in there and that that's nice if you got a ramp like that i had the excavator Dwayne there dig that ramp so we could get material down in here and work cut it straight Yeah, the pencil line. Okay guys, so what we did is we put the cut against the building here, so um, there wouldn't be any common seam there. That's what we did there. We're not putting that. We're gonna drill some rebar in that um, block wall too. 
so that she locks right in. But you're going to put the cut against the building like he is right there. Yep, you're doing it. And that's going to eliminate any common seams because we're going to put the flip that block around so then the dirt faces out. So instead of starting with a full block here, guys, and running it, and you probably end up with a common seam somewhere in your wall, we just put that cut to the wall. Yeah, and we'll put all our cuts to the wall. And you can clip that together. We're probably going to want to trim the bottom of that block where it meets the wall here, the nubs off the bottom. I would say there's like a high see that high spot yeah. in the footer right there mm -hmm. i gotta kind of trim for that okay. so that it sits flat so I'm up, trim a little bit you see how you got that material in there from the old footer yep so I just take your bottom side and just kind of trim these nubs a little bit right in here you don't have to take them right off just take them right off. do the same thing probably do Yeah, put it where it goes. I marked oh, it there for a reason. I, <laughs> I didn't mark it. How's it going with you? I wanted it where I marked it. I thought we were going straight up. No, no, no. That top rebar is going to go all right in that groove. We might as well drill down over there. Same idea. I thought you just got a little wonky on it. Nope. I marked them right where I want them. Enough. See if they core drilled this one or core filled this one. So I'm going to stick those rods inside that wall, right in here, yeah. Both, just two of them. Push them in a little bit. Yeah. And put your block in there. Okay, now take those rods, stick them in the wall, as far as they'll go. Just the bottom two. Grab four clips, too. Why'd you take it out? Put it right in there. Goes in the next one up. It's got a shame, I guess that's it. Right. I'll put it there. Now we got two rebars in there. The next rebar is gonna go in this groove and go all the way down the wall. You know what I mean? Full length. You wanna grab some full length rebars? So each course will have three rebars tying into that block wall. She ain't gonna move. Big B, she ain't gonna move. Those bottom ones are kind of a pain. So we're gonna put 
put this rebar on the tension side of the wall, guys. Doing a year over one from where Jay is. Yep. Go over one more there. Yeah, get it. You push that rebar over out of the way. Yeah. Maybe it's all right. Maybe it's all right. Yeah, I guess it's all right. As long as you're on your run, yeah, you're on your run. By the tension side, what I mean by that is the dirt pushes this way against the wall. So if this wall was to break, this bar being on the inside of here is the tension side. So it will resist the forces where if it was here, if the wall did break, it would hinge. And it would just bend the rebar and this would open up like, no, like that, if that makes sense. So we usually, well, we always do, we'll put, I'm saying these two holes here are the tension side of the block so this course i'm going to put it here the next course i'm going to put it one over here so when i drop my verticals down in they go between the two rebars so when they go between the two rebars they're not going to fall or lay against the foam they're going to be right where i want them and we drop them in by this one right here so it gets cast in right by that so like i said next course we're just going to go over one hole over and we'll do the same thing we'll put three rebars in there like this got three of them in there we're gonna wire that one up and they all get cast into the wall and right into the concrete block now we're gonna spray foam it here in a minute I'm gonna check it for square again and then I'm gonna spray foam it we bend it around the corner guys and tie it together just lap it it's about a foot or so 12 14 inch lap on her Ooh, oh, dude. That would hurt. Don't hit yourself with that. No, that would suck. It'd be reckless. No, I guess. It's like a bone of china closet. Dude, put one here, too. Oh, it broke right off. Because you're over twisting it. I'm trying to get it too tight. Well, maybe not. Well, is it tight better than those? Well, depending on what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, there. All right, buckshot. Okay, now we're going to spray foam it. we got to make sure right, she's we square. We do? Okay, go grab that one. I thought I did it. Missing one? Okay. That piece right there might be long enough. All right. That's what we do, guys. Just a little zap. Bing, bing, bing. About every two, three feet. Right around there with, with spray foam. Like I said, we got a snap line on the footer, so you got to make sure you stay on that footer. In about a half hour, you won't move this. You can see how Big Biscuit got the outside all the way down through. And that holds this very well, guys, for getting this first course in and you can uh, pour your floor like i've showed you on other videos you definitely can uh, pour that floor it does not move this first course Oops. step down come on yeah don't worry about that course moving once it dries it doesn't work good if it's wet out but if it's dry like today it's 90 degrees we're gonna eat some lunch and then by the time lunch is over this bad boy is gonna be rock solid and we're right on our line so good to go we double checked our diagonals again with this first course before we sprayed her down everything's nice and square so we're rock and rolling that's how we do it and uh, i've said it before but for if you're new to my uh, channel here guys um, we like to pour this floor we're going to pour this floor tomorrow we're not going to build the walls because uh it's just so much easier to pour this floor we can go right over to the top with a conveyor and pour this whole floor. We can reach over our wall with our mags. We don't have to kneeboard the floor or nothing. It's going to be super easy to pour this floor. And then uh, we'll build our walls after that. And it just makes life a lot easier. And that's how we're going to do it. Lunchtime. Lunchtime, tuna boat.
Oh yeah, the kid likes to eat, man. <laughs>